Hey y'all, it's Jess, uh, also known as Holistic Autistic, and I'm joined by my friend. I'm Charlie Martinez, aka Old Man Charles. You may know me from YouTube and Instagram. Mm -hmm. So we just wanted to talk a little bit about what uh, he actually came up with our title, The Renaissance of Autism, which is a really great title. Um, because before the internet was like a huge big thing and we have the autism community in the way that we've connected uh, today, then there wasn't as much knowledge about autism and how it actually presented in the vast variety of people that we now can see. And it kind of started in 1998 where Judy Singer co uh, coined the term neurodiversity. And she explained it as a variation in the human brain regarding sociability, learning, attention, mood, and other mental functions. And that was kind of the beginning of realizing that different people have different brains and that autism is just a natural variation of human diversity. And so Charlie was gonna talk a little bit about in, uh, before the internet uh, came about then just kind of like the beginning of the renaissance of autism, so. Like the beginning of the, well, before we had mainstream media and all these outlets to connect with the media community and the autism community. Back in the early nine, 1990s, we had this autism group that first started by the group members, Donna Williams, Jim Sinclair, and Kathy Grant, which were individuals on the spectrum. And they were the first ones to start the autism rights movement, which is a movement to help provide aut autistics the right to be a normalized social norm instead of a defect from vaccines that even to this day, we're fighting to have autism become a social norm instead of being a defect. Mm -hmm. Because like before this in like, pretty much from the 1940s until then, it was not understood really at all. Um, it, or it wasn't understood fully from, from what, what was available. Um, you had some people in the 80s who kind of made some progress in showing that it's not just men who have autism um, and that it's not just verbal or nonverbal as like the categorizations, right? Um, we got Temple Grandin, uh, who did a lot of work in showing what uh, you can do like to, to succeed in life without um, having to conform to these certain standards. Um, and she was probably told a lot of the same things that us 90s kids uh, were told of like, oh, they're probably not gonna be able to talk. They probably won't be able to live on their own and stuff. And she was able to be a really, really successful person uh, in her business and everything that she did. Um, I got diagnosed uh, when I was 23, yeah. And Charlie, you were diagnosed, what age? Uh, a few months after 1998, when I was born a few months after. Okay. Yeah. And so like we had very different like experiences growing up probably because you were diagnosed when you were a kid and I was diagnosed 2019. <laughs> right? Mm. And right. so do you think that the DSM-5 like needs to be changed because of how much more knowledge we have now about autism? Yes, just because throughout the years and information we've gathered as a whole with all these scientific discoveries on how to analyze autistic behaviors from children, adults, or any age, we should be able to identify autism in the law of kids while they're younger. And because if we don't get to analyze the autism as they grow up, then uh, when they grow up, they could also gain other more difficulties like anxiety, or depression because they feel as if what how they act is wrong and like they need to be emotionally validated to know that they're on the spectrum you know 
yeah, that was pretty much exactly what I went through as a teenager and stuff too. Um, and a lot of what the DSM-5 says is that like um, deficits in social communication and social interaction, um, failure of normal back and forth conversation, uh, deficits in nonverbal communication, uh, stereotyped repetitive movements, um, restricted fixated interests, uh, just like all this stuff is like deficits, deficits, you have uh, problems in all these areas. Um, but I think that it needs to be changed because it's really just differences because maybe we have a failure of back and forth communication sometimes, but that's a neurotypical way of communicating. The autistic way of communi communicating isn't the wrong way, it's just a different way, you know, and all those things that they're talking about. Um, and so once the internet kind of came about, then we have a bunch of autistic people who are brought together and can share platforms and they can teach each other and learn from each other about their experiences. And with all these combined personal accounts of how like you've lived life as an autistic, then like really psychology only ever really theorized what autism was. And we actually have a way to communicate on a large scale for everyone uh, what autism actually is from our own personal experiences. Exactly, Jess, because uh, when you think of mainstream media, you think about outlets, just like you mentioned right now, to be able to have people have their own stance on what they believe in. and is like what everyone's been saying before that Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, TikTok, they're all exploding right now in the autism community and everyone's coming out and it's allowing people to express themselves in ways that you couldn't have access to back in the 90s and 2000s. And it's just amazes me that we're getting amazing figures like Agni, Achi, Nero Rebel, and John Kerry here in the scene right now on social media. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love what Agony Audi uh, once said in one of her one of her videos um, was about, oh gosh, what was I going to say? I totally just blanked on what I was going to say. Uh, I was watching one of her videos earlier today on YouTube um, that she was talking about how autism is like a neurotype, a difference of the brain. And so because we have all these differences in different areas, um, then when we, when we all connect, then we're able to say, oh, these, these things are normal about us. These things are okay. Um, and so much of autism is stigmatized in a way that when we actually come out, as like authentic autistic people, then people, then like other people are always like, oh, you're faking. Oh, you're not really autistic. There's a whole, there's a whole issue with that being said about tons of autistic people online. And that's really just because people don't actually know what autism is. And so when they see an aut a real autistic person behaving differently from like a few characters in movies that most people just think is the extent of autism, then that's, that's what you get when people don't know everything that is included in autism. Um, and like intersectionality is really important too, because if we're just stereotyped as these certain, as these certain behaviors and these certain like uh, emotional like abilities and these certain like physical abilities, then tons and tons of people will go undiagnosed. Yeah, totally. Like, if people want to go based on what they see on television or movies like Rain Man, Forrest Gump, and Atypical, or those movies basically where you see people being, becoming mathematic geniuses or stacking cans, like, mm -hmm. you can't go based on stereotypes like you mentioned. And in a way, there's a lot of things people don't know about with people on the spectrum, especially... Uh, this very known fact that I've observed throughout my time on the autism online community that a lot of the autistic communities linked to the LGBTQ community right now. Mm -hmm. 
And there's also like there there's lots of evidence that maybe it's not because you're autistic you experience these certain things or uh present in this certain way or have these coexisting conditions but it's linked to autism somehow and just like we're more prone to be certain other things um like lots of lots of us have like comorbidities uh i i don't have like any physical like disabilities but there's a lot that there should be way more research on the links of autism and epilepsy or Ellis Danlos syndrome and all these different things. Um, because then with more knowledge comes more power, you know. Or like autism and uh, anxiety or both come together pretty much, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I think that but what what I was thinking of um, before, I never got across to it. But Agony Audi, she said uh, she said something once about how where we are right now with the autism like community um, is where like the gay community was in the 1970s, and like it's a weird it it's kind of weird to compare those two. But like the like I don't I don't think that like we should like be comparing different. Um, like uh, minorities or like anything like that. That's not what the point is. The point is that we are like so at the beginning of like a revolution through the medical community to actually understanding autism. Like we're right at the beginning, the internet and everyone who's like autistic accounts have all like been combined like on the internet. Like that is the beginning of something huge. And I think that the more we push for equality then the more that autism will become a social norm so it's accepted instead of stigmatized and misunderstood exactly and we're just going to keep on growing like it's like like it says in the title of this video it's going to become like a autism renaissance we're just going to keep on growing in age and once we're on the rise we're going to just keep on growing mm -hmm. yeah i i like how lots of places um, have autistic pride festivals actually because we are openly becoming more aware that like we are entitled to be out in public and existing as autistic people just like anyone else is entitled to like live their life uh, as themselves and uh, like I'm I'm really excited for like more of that kind of stuff to come up we have like autistics have like autistic is autism is kind of like a subculture actually that we're we're lucky to be born into um like we've got like so much like richness as like a community that that's really that's really all that we want so yeah because you know growing up like we can each individually think that we're like one of a kind in our own community where there's rarely any autistics around where we live but like mm -hmm. you gotta think of it this way we live in a small world even though it's like a giant planet but it's like being the one uh negative it's like being the aspie narrow type out of your whole community pretty much <laughs> yeah exactly if that's the right word <laughs> Well, this is a good talk. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for collaborating. It was fun. No problem. Mm -hmm. It's so, an honor to be here. Oh, hmm. well, we're going to put our links to our YouTube channels and our, well, this is going to be on YouTube, so you probably know the YouTube channel, but of each other for whoever's uh, you are watching this on. We're also going to put some Instagram links and whatever else that you can do to contact us. So everyone have a great day. Have Bye. a good day, yep. <laughs>